going on my blue collar hustlers out there in today's video we're going to show you how to install one of these double bowl sinks in a brand new countertop let's get started <laughs> Exactly what we've got here by Dayton, and this is made in the USA K233224. Right here is what you're looking at a nice, simple two point stainless steel. It's lightweight, really easy to install. Some people will tell you to put caulking around these things and stick them in there, but there is clips that go on these sinks that you need. See, if you flip it up right here, you'll see all these little rails right there. That's where them clips go into place at. They're basically anchors, and once you stick that double bowl sink down in there, you get them anchors in place, you press it up against the counter you start tightening them up and it holds it in place here's what i'm talking about whenever i say clips or anchors these are what they look like that's what that specialty tool is for this part right here goes inside the rail this part right here is what you tighten up with a flathead screwdriver or the specialty tool those teeth right there is what grabs in and grips it and holds everything in place of course you will need a few other things if you've got a brand new faucet to install it is best doing this assembly all outside and then putting it all in place at one time it's just much easier that way that way you're not laying on your back under the sink for two hours plus with this one we've also got some brand new angle stops already installed you want to see the basic installation process on those check out this video link in the description box below but with today's assembly i'm going to add everything together and show you how to hook all this stuff up at one time with your dishwasher line washer is pretty self-explanatory you hook up your water line your hoses you run it to power you stick it underneath this sink mount it in place and you're good to go but what you're going to need for the sink like i said beside a brand new faucet you're going to need some of these things right here like the cup strainer you're going to need two of those these are made by dearborn db 1000 it's got a stainless steel body and basket galvanized locking cap plastic post and a rubber stopper and all your how-to instructions are right here it tells you about the strainer basket the strainer body where it goes into it the sink the extra thick black washer the friction washer which you absolutely do need the mounting cup the lock nut the tpv washer and the slip nut but you will need two of those for your double bowl sink if you're installing a dishwasher you are going to need this connection kit part number p37031 and then we've got a one and a half by 16 inch center outlet waste drain it basically ties both of those bowls in the sink and the strainers together to go down the drain and it all hooks in your dishwasher line as well here's the faucet we're going to be installing it's the delta classic now unfortunately we had a brand new sink that was installed in this whenever i had the guys come in to put these brand new cabinets up right here well unfortunately they threw away the brand new faucet that went in here so we have to replace it no ifs ands or buts about it we'll do the fighting later but for this video you don't need to know all that stuff so let's get started what you want to do to start this out is go ahead and grab your locking cup sink strainers pull these out of the box right here you go everything comes assembled but you have to disassemble it and start putting it together like i said the instructions are right here took apart right here's how it's basically going to lay out make sure you keep your friction ring the way they intend it to go on there because this is a very important piece whether you realize it or not basically whenever you go to tighten this thing up if you're tightening up the nut up against the rubber it's going to dig into the rubber and you're not going to get a good seal for basically takes all that friction away whenever you're tightening up the nut and it lets your rubber stay right where it needs to be at to seal everything off by taking part number one here put it in the sink get it where you need it at the next part of the assembly is going to be your seal and then your friction ring then you need to install your mounting cup and then go ahead and start threading on your lock nut everything in place down in there like i said hold everything right where you need it at then go ahead and get this nut started but you get it up in here a little bit, you want to make sure it's in line where you want it at. And then just tighten it up by hand. All you need it right now is to be tightened up by hand, get both of them in place, and we'll tighten them up with a tool here in a minute. You can see, here's what it's going to look like. You see where the seal is going up against the base of the sink and everything's in place. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Both of these installed and they're pretty well where you want them to be at, tightening them up by hand. You're going to need to get yourself a pair of pliers. I'm going to tighten up the strainers on these things. It is best if you have a pair of pliers to put on this lock nut right here and you've got yourself these 
special wrench needed to put inside that stringer and hold it in place. And I do got myself the tool needed to do that job, but I'm gonna use a different tool here today. This little multi-tool right here got sent to me a while back. I didn't know how handy it would be, and I've been testing it out, trying it out. As you can see, the jaws on this thing is definitely big enough to fit around that lock nut if I need to tighten that up. But since I need to hold that strainer basket in place, I'm gonna use this tool to do it with because it's got these two little nubs right here on the bottom to help hold it while I'm tightening it up on the other end with the vice grip plier. Before I hold this thing down and start tightening it up, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up a little bit with this adjustable wrench right here. It is where I need it at. I got it lined up and I'm just gonna kinda of snug it up right there. I'm not gonna put pressure on it until here in a minute whenever I give it the final amount of torque that it's needed. I just wanna kinda of get it where I need it to be at right now. Make sure everything is in line. As you can see this one here, there's a little bit more room up here. It's off to the side here. So I'm gonna to want to adjust that. That's why it's imperative that you hold these in place whenever you're tightening them up. And you can grab this one tool right here Put it in between your hands to hold it and it will fit right there. It will keep that strainer from turning whenever you're tightening up that lock nut. And if you're the type that doesn't want to spend $30 for that one pair of pliers by Irwin, you can always pick one of these up from Cobalt for only about $18 and it's an adjustable wrench, especially if you're working on any type of plumbing. All you gotta do is loosen up that wing nut right there. Whenever you loosen it up, it allows you to turn these jaws wherever you want them at. Plus, it's got this little hoop right here in it, so on certain sinks, you need to get a hold of the teeth on that thing to tighten up the lock nut. That will help you do that job as well. But this one, like I said, is a cheaper alternative. So you know what? We're gonna use this. We're gonna use our special multi-tool over here, and we're gonna get this thing installed. I'm gonna try to get you all a good angle right here, because what you wanna do is make sure, like I said, this thing is lined up. So once you get your adjustable wrench right here in place, you tighten up the jaws, you tighten it up, you lock that down so it won't move on you, and then you can move the strainer around right where you need it at. You can hold it from the inside if you'd like. But once it's in place in the relative area where you want it at, you simply take this and put it right over top of that nut, and then you tighten it up. You tighten it till it's nice and snug, about where you need it at. After that, you can take this multi-tool wrench right here, put it in place, or if you got the other tool, you can do that if you'd like. And then go ahead and stick this right back on top here, and then go ahead and tighten it down. Make sure it's nice and snug. That way that seal has got a good bite. And you do that to both of them. Put our multi-tool right here, keep tension on it. We got this exactly where we want it at. We'll put our other wrench on here, press down on this, and then apply torque to it. Make sure it's good and tight because you do not want this thing leaking whenever you get it installed. These are where multi-tools do have a purpose in certain situations and trades and these both do pretty good for their job. We got those nice and tightened down the way we want them at. We're gonna go ahead and install our nuts on the bottom here until we get the drain lines and everything we need in place. That way we don't lose these things and they're right where we need them at whenever we go to look for them. Right there's where she's gonna sit at. We're already test fitting everything. It's nice, flush, level. So we're gonna pull it back out here and get our faucet attached. And here's our nice new Delta Classic faucet. And I tell you what, I like the way they designed these things. The new ones, they got the hoses. You don't have to go buy the braided hoses for this because they already come installed. And these are basically made from PEX is the best way I can describe it right there. And as you can see it, it's been heated up and shrunk right around the fitting here. So all you gotta do is install this. And I love the design that they have on these things right here because on the end, all you gotta do is pop this clip right here, pop this piece off, and then you can hook up your hose. So if you don't have a hose accessory on your sink, which this one does, that fourth hole over there, then you don't have to worry about taking it off because this thing's already sealed off as long as that is secured in place. The moment you pop that loose, you pop this out, you can pop this and in place, you're ready to rock and roll. And installing sink faucets are one of the worst things anybody hates doing, but whenever you're doing it like this, it's great. All we gotta do is pull it out and put it in place. Each and every one of your hoses right here is gonna feed through that middle hole right there. And those two threaded pieces of plastic is gonna go through the other two holes. You're gonna save the fourth hole over there for your hose. So if you use this type of faucet setup, just go ahead and start feeding them through that center hole right there. Get them where you need them at. Put them in place. Right there's where it needs to go. And this allows us to get to the nuts that we need to put on there without crawling underneath the sink. Here's all of your hardware that comes with it. This little section right here is gonna go with your hose. These are gonna be your lock nuts. And it gives us two plastic rings in the event that you want to cut 
the PVC hoses. Now some people will cut these things off. Once it sits down in there, it might be three inches away and they'll go ahead and cut off whatever they need. If it's up here, they'll cut it off right there. They'll put the compression fittings on there. They'll tighten it up, hook it straight to their lines. But in my case, I like leaving these things natural, looping them around, hooking them up. That way, if you ever have a problem in the future, you got something that blows a hole in it, you can snip it off. Go ahead and put your compression fitting on there, hook it right back up without having to go buy any other part. Getting ahead of myself, so before you do that, make sure you put this gasket in place. That's basically what this is. It serves as a gasket underneath the sink right here. So I'll have to pull this back out, lay this down, stick it back on top of there, and then put the nuts in place. You get those on there. It's quite simple. You level this up, make sure it's nice and straight, and then you tighten these things up by hand. You don't need to put a pair of pliers on them. Just make sure it's where you need it at, nice and flush, and then tighten them up. It's that simple. Now we're ready to come over here and get our hose and our accessories. On this one, you're going to want to take this piece, stick it down inside here, pull that up because that's going to be sitting on top. Come over here, slide it through your fourth hole, make sure it's in place where you want it at, put this lock nut on there, tighten it up. Now grab your hose and then feed it down inside the hole, like so. Get it in there where you need it at. And now, everything you got to do underneath the sink is basically going to be hooking up your drain lines, hooking up your water lines, and all that stuff in between. We're going to pick the sink up, set it right down in its place. But before we do that, we're going to take some of our anchors right here, and we're going to slide them in there. I'm going to probably put about two or three on the back because this is a double bow, so I'm going to put one here, one right through here somewhere, and then one through here. Now, the ones on the side, you can put about three down, three down, four on the front. It depends on how many they give you in your set. Make sure they're evenly spaced apart because that's what you're going to need to secure your sink to your countertop. And once you do that, go ahead and drop your sink in place. Make sure everything is nice and in line where you need it at. And then you can go under the sink and go ahead and start taking all those anchors, placing them up against your countertop, tightening them down. In fact, you could have done this up top, but why spoil all the fun? All you gotta do with this clip is take it and pop it open like so. Once that's fully opened, you go ahead and pull this thing out. As you see, it has a seal around it. So if you ever needed to take that hose off there, you keep this, you can stick it right back in place, lock it down, it's good to go. Change your O-ring from time to time, you're ready to roll. But here's the one that goes to your hose. You take it, as you can see right there, it's got seals all inside here. Make sure that's nice and straight. And then you line it up, and then you gotta push it all the way up in there, make sure it's locked in. Once it's good and locked in, you pull that clip around through here, you lock it in place, you could try to pull down on it if you'd like, and it should not leak because it's got all those different O-rings in there to seal it off. Once that's in there, it's locked until you unlock it and pull it back out. From time to time, if it does leak, you can replace those O-rings, which is a great thing about these types of sinks and their hoses. Now way up here is one of those anchors that I installed before we put it under the sink. As you can see, I turn it straight around and it's right there underneath the countertop. Now all you gotta do is get it where you want it at and then you can start tightening it up by hand if you had the proper tool for the job. And you simply put that tool in there, you hold it, you tighten it up until you get a little bit of a bite. You do that all the way around to each and every one of the anchors until they're nice and tightened down. Don't over tighten them, just tighten them up enough to where you know that they're not gonna go anywhere. If you got yourself the right kind of tools, you can always make yourself the specialty tool to make this job easier, tightening up those anchors. Grab yourself a flathead bit like this one right here. You can get yourself a quarter inch square to a quarter inch hex adapter. And all you gotta do is shave this down, make it about half the size so it will sit down inside there. But if you have one of these adapters, buy your one, it's even better because you can pull the collar on it and stick it right down in there. The problem is if it don't come out, well, you got yourself a specialty tool permanently you'll just have to buy you another one of those but i've used this a few dozen times this way and it does exactly what you need it to do by sticking your quarter inch hex bit down inside there and going straight to work because as you see it fits right down inside there what to do is get your angle stops get your hoses right here the one on the left is going to be hot color coded you can see the red right there and you're going to hook it up to your angle stop 
and everybody does things differently like i said i've looped this one up and around and plugged it in that way and then the other one's going to be the blue it is color coded for blue as you can see they are hooked up the way i want them we got that one going over to the dishwasher we got the drain coming out and we got the angle stop here for the hot we got the hose for the sprayer and we got the hose for the cold and i've got it looped de looped around because the one thing i hate is whenever something gets in the way to where you can't move your hose it'll get hung up so whenever we install the drain we're gonna make sure it's setting out of the way to where it will move freely that's the basics on installing this sink tighten down those anchors hook up all your lines your faucet next will simply be the drains and tighten up those with this tool right here from cobalt check out the review linked in the description box below i tell you what this is a handy dandy tool. If you need one of these, definitely check out that review. Now that I got those good and tightened up, we're gonna reassemble the rest so we can start putting some water in this thing and checking for leaks. What's left to do is hook up all the drain lines to this sink and we are ready to rock and roll. What you need to do is break out your center waste outlet here. Go ahead and remove all those nuts that's on your strainers. Then you go ahead and tighten them back up on each one of these. If you can get a pretty good grip on these from where you're at, tightening them up by hand should be plenty good enough so you don't crack them. I mean, that's the seal that's gonna push it up against the strainer. That way there's no leaks as everything's running down the drain. On top of that, in the future, if you was to get any kind of leak, you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of room to tighten that thing up. You're not gonna to wanna to over tighten anything. Finally, we've come to that part of the video where I'm not gonna continue showing the rest of the repair because there's just too many things, too many variables that can factor into your drain system. It's a whole slew of different things and I'm not gonna list them all here today. Let's just say you got all kinds of different materials that you could have coming in and out of your house depending on the age of your house, the height of your sink, your countertops, your cabinets, the different size pipes. Your one particular house could have anything going on with it, depending on whether you're an apartment, an old house, a new house. You could have cast iron pipes, one and a half inch pipes running down to three quarter inch, up to one inch, one and a quarter inch, galvanized, PEX, PVC, CPVC, brass, copper, galvanized, you name it, there could be a mess going on in your house. And I can't tell you adequately enough how you can hook everything up to fit your needs because it's going to be different than what we're dealing with here today. Now, over time, we will go into details on different types of plumbing repairs and drain lines and stuff like that. But for today's video, we're focusing on the sink, the installation, the new faucet, all that good stuff in between. So I'm going to finish hooking this thing up. We're going to leak test it and we're going to be done with this job. Ooh, found a leak right here. We're definitely going to have to replace that hose. Because you always want to make sure that your valves and your hoses are not leaking. Do not see any leaks leaks coming anywhere so far now we want to make sure to fill this up put the stopper in it on each one of the strainers here just to make sure that nothing's leaking around the seals then we're going to pop them and let them drain make sure it drains running good too without any leaks going to test our sprayer out make sure both of these are locked up and now there's no leaks from any of the hoses anything like that nothing is leaking here which is exactly what we want to see now we will pull the stoppers just to make sure there's nothing leaking in either one of our drains. It appears to be good to go. And of course, if you got leaks, tighten it up a little bit more. Don't over tighten it. If the video was helpful to you, why don't you comment down below and let me know. If you want to see more content like that on this channel, why don't you comment down below and let me know. Otherwise, Follow all these social media platforms. I've got a wide variety of different content for you to choose from. I use a wide range of different tools, and I can tell you better than anybody whether they will perform best for what you need them for or not. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Now, pop the clutch on that subscribe button.